Hogwarts Castle, a five-inch gauge locomotive. Part four, preparing the cylinder cladding, cross heads and wheels for painting. Where possible, I don't like to use paint stripper because it gets into the places that I don't want it to get into. I find a much better way of doing a job like this is to use some very coarse sandpaper. If I was going to remove the paint from a much larger area, then yes, I would use paint stripper. But for removing paint from cylinder cladding, I do prefer doing it this way. I noticed a very slight crease in the cylinder cladding, so I removed it by using a piece of brass held behind the cylinder cladding and then tapping the cladding with a soft hammer. Then it's back to more sanding. The only bad thing about the cylinder cladding on this cylinder is there's a dint right at the bottom, and as the engine's upside down currently, it's right at the top. This will fill using some JB Weld. I don't like to use car body filler on parts like this. JB Weld is a lot better, a lot stronger and more permanent. There was a time when I'd never used this stuff called JB Weld, but so many viewers kept recommending it, I bought a couple of tubes. And I've never looked back, it really is great stuff to use. It's a two-pack epoxy putty, but one half of the epoxy mix has got some ground steel in it. It really is good stuff to use. There are certain parts of the cladding where I cannot successfully get to with sandpaper, mainly near the rivets that hold the cladding to the cylinder. I don't want to change the shape of the rivets by sanding them down. It took about half an hour on this side to get rid of the paint, but now it's more or less all gone. While I had the wire brush and the drill, it seemed like a good idea to clean up the crosshead at the same time. No sandpaper on this part because it really will change the shape of it, it will flatten off the rivets and it would also change the shape of the gunmetal slippers by rounding the edges and that would spoil the appearance of the crosshead. So for this part it's just a wire brush followed by some Scotch-Brite. The paint came off the crosshead very easily indeed. In this clip I'm using the piece of green Scotch-Brite to clean up the gland nut. This is a small battery powered rotary tool with a wire brush fitted in the end of the flexible drive. So why didn't I use this in the first place? Well, that's quite simple. This is a rechargeable rotary tool and the battery lasts no time at all. It's a complete waste of time. Note to self, why not buy a proper mains powered Dremel? I think I'll put that on my Christmas list. This rotary tool only just had enough battery power to remove the final flex of paint. So that's one side done. Time to start cleaning up the wheels. Initially I cleaned the wheels along with everything else in my small parts washer, but the parts washer didn't get rid of all the grit and grime. In this clip I have one of the wheel sets in a plastic tub, and I'm using panel wipe to clean it. So what's panel wipe? Well as far as I'm aware it is naphtha, or lighter fluid, or lighter petrol. It's a very effective degreaser and it evaporates almost immediately. And in this clip you can see how quickly it does evaporate. Time to bring in the heavy artillery. This is an old toothbrush, it's not the one that I currently use. The toothbrush is definitely better for this job, it allows me to put a lot more pressure on the spokes and get rid of all of the grease and grime. I have to be really thorough when doing this job because the last thing I want is to spray over any dirt that's still sticking to the spokes. First I do one side, then I turn the wheel set over to do the other side. In this clip you really can see how quickly this stuff evaporates, watch this. On this side of the wheel, some of the paint that had been previously applied had run. And to remove these drips and runs, I used some 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper, and I used it wet, but not using water, I used the panel wipe. It's never a good idea to use wet or dry sandpaper using water on cast iron and steel parts because obviously the water will cause rusting. When using wet or dry sandpaper on ferrous metals, I would generally use machine oil as a cutting lubricant, but I don't want the wheels to be oily because I'm going to paint them. That's why I'm using the panel wipe as a cutting lubricant. At the moment I'm doing the wheel treads because whoever previously painted this engine sprayed the treads and everything. And there's not a problem because, of course, the paint wears off the treads very quickly. I'm going to mask off the treads when I paint the wheels. Looking at the quality of the build of this locomotive, it's pretty good, really. 
The engine was obviously made by an experienced and competent model engineer. Small details like the way the axle's been turned between the axle boxes is clear evidence that someone took great care when they made this engine. The front axle of the locomotive is not that visible and I think if I'd have built it I would have just left it parallel but as I've said many times I'm not a proper engineer, I'm a musician. A musician with very dirty hands as usual and I still smile at the comment that one viewer left me. The comment read, You've got very dirty hands, I think you need a pedicure. I think I replied at the time, Well, I got my feet sorted out, but it's not made any difference to my hands. I started off by using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the centre part of the axle, but some of the paint was stubborn and I used some much coarser sandpaper. I was very careful not to sand the main axles. And if any meticulous viewers out there are going to start writing in and saying, oh, what about all the grit going in the bearing? Well, no, it's not going to be a problem for two reasons. Reason number one, I'm going to put the wheel sets back into the parts washer and flush every part of them. Then when the parts washer solvent has dried, I'm going to use some more panel wipe. And the other reason is, well, it wouldn't be a problem anyway. If you think about it, some of these axles are very close to the ash pan and the axle boxes get covered in ash, and they seem to work quite well. Coal-fired steam locomotives are really good. They look right, they smell right, and they sound right. But they are extremely dirty things. While I mix up some JB Weld and apply it to the cladding on the cylinder, I'll tell you a story. From time to time, I've spent some time on the footplate of various engines and I once went up to North Yorkshire Moors Railway and spent the entire day from four in the morning until eight o'clock in the evening being on and around a Great Western Pannier Tank locomotive. After a very enjoyable day, I was driving home and I was very thirsty, so I stopped and called into a shop to buy a chocolate milkshake. And I did notice that the shopkeeper gave me a really funny look. And it wasn't till I got home and looked at myself in the mirror that I realised why the shopkeeper reacted strangely. With all the coal dust and soot, I looked like an Al Jolson impersonator. Happy days indeed. You've been watching me applying the JB Weld to the cylinder cladding, and here I'm just poking through the holes, which later will take a bolt to hold the cylinder cladding to the steam chest at the top. There's nothing more I can do in this episode, I just need to leave the cylinder cladding for 24 hours for the JB Weld to set, after which I will rub it down again and get a really super smooth finish. So that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.